This is the Gamelands 314 MOTL timber sale, and this is part of a large habitat project intended to uh, improve wildlife habitat for woodcock. This is a very important game lands for woodcock migration and woodcock habitat. We acquired the property in 1992. Audubon uh, had designated this area as an important bird area. Since we have acquired the property, we have been looking for ways to create early successional habitat for various warbler species and the American woodcock. We're trying to take a very large portion of that landscape and revert it back um, to a shrubland area. But to provide enough habitat for, in particular, migrating um, waterfowl, migrating birds such as American woodcock and other warblers and neotropical migrant songbirds, they need large areas of early successional habitat to focus in on for their migrations. Game Lands 314 is so important because it lies right on the edge of Lake Erie on the south side, which is a major stopover point for a lot of wildlife before they start making the trek in the migration up across the lake. So they need habitat that provides great cover from predators where they can rest before they make the rest of the trip, um, and something that will provide a lot of food um, for their trip. Those shrubland areas will provide a lot of insect diversity and they'll provide a lot of soft mast berries and fruits on those shrubs for those birds to consume before they continue their migration. The majority of the stands that we had laid out for this timber sale were predominantly red maple. 90 plus percent was red maple and the value of those stands, they do have soft mast, but when you go into these stands, the average diameters varied from you know 12 to 16 inch and essentially they had some shrub cover on the ground, but more or less you could see through them for hundreds of yards. And when we're dealing with the American woodcock and, and, the, and the warbler species that we're looking at, we wanted to target those specific areas with the red maple in them and convert them to early succession. Obviously by, by harvesting this timber, um, we will be benefiting deer and turkeys and other game species as well. And although those were not the target species in this management, this, man this type of management actually fits quite well into management designs for those species. Throughout this harvest uh, on all these different 17 harvesting blocks, we've also reserved small islands or groups of trees within the harvest where we're targeting specific species of vegetation. Um, some of the beneficial shrub species we have up there on that landscape. Uh, we actually have some very unique um, tree species up there that are seldom found. We have swamp white oak, we have pumpkin ash, we have some black ash, um, black gum. Um, and some other tree species that provide a, a pretty high value for wildlife with their mast production or um, just the uniqueness of them in the area. So this, this grove was reserved because of its species composition. We have shagbark hickory here, we have red oak, we have swamp white oaks. Um, and again, these are important mast producers, hard mast producers. These nuts and acorns have high content of fatty oils, which carry roughly twice the calories that uh, fruits would carry. The other characteristic that red maple harbors is that in its mature state, deer cannot reach it, so they can't browse. And secondly, although it produces a winged seed, that seed is not um, a primary forage species or mast species for many species of wildlife. Uh, to say that no one eats that seed would be un untrue, but relative to an oak or a soft fruit like a black gum or blackberry or raspberry, it's really low quality. Again, this stand was cut less than one year ago, so we're not even through the first full growing season yet, and you can see many, many of the young saplings are already uh, seven, approaching eight foot tall. Um, and again, these are, what we're seeing are a lot of poplars coming in, which would include uh, quaking aspen and in some areas cottonwoods. And these are great browse species for white-tailed deer. The species you see here 
are naturally regenerating. We did not seed any of this. It's all here in the seed bank. And of course, many of the ashes and, and red maples are going to occur again, not only from seed, but also from stump sprouts. Um, we move over here, we see pokeberry. Eventually, this will produce a deep, uh, dark blue berry that, again, is valuable to many species of wildlife. Uh, many species of animals like it. A lot of blackberry coming in, and you can see a, it's all over the stand. And again, this is a great browse species for deer. And so here we have grapes that at some point in time hopefully will produce a grape crop mixed with the shrub that's producing a fruit crop. And this stand was cut less than a year ago, and we see ash that's approximately two feet tall. So deer are inhibiting the growth a little bit. That's what we wanted was to place browse at a level deer could reach. And in the fall, browse is gonna become more important when deer are gonna change their diets and include a lot more browse. And, and so that's an important habitat component um, for deer. Virginia creeper, nightshade. Deer love to browse raspberries. This is northern arrowwood. Here we have a red oak seedling, another primary browse species. This is a young dogwood, and deer love to browse the dogwoods. These species, uh, if you could find them in a forest, typically aren't producing fruit, and usually if they occur in a forest, it's a very low numbers. Um, so out here, with the canopy removed, Again, we find lots of species of fruit producing shrubs and vines and a lot of herbaceous plants that are also producing uh, fruits and seeds. We hope to diversify the forest on Gamelands 314 and provide a little bit more fruit, a little bit more browse. And like I said, this is roughly a 700 acre sale. But the game lands itself is almost 3,200 acres. So we're cutting around 20% of the game lands for woodcock habitat. By removing all the large stumps, all the large log material, and all the logging debris that would typically be left behind, we're removing that debris from the site so we can go back in with machinery and continue to maintain it in that status. The ultimate goal is, once we're done clearing these areas off, would be to come back in in five to 10 year increments prior to them reaching over six inches in diameter and basically re-mow them down with a machine with a cutting head and maintain them as scrub shrub. And the first thing that happens on a site like this is we prepare the landing so the trucks can back in and get the material out. Next thing that happens is a feller buncher will come in and it'll grab the tree with uh, basically it's two arms coming around the tree and it's got a cutting bell saw, cuts the tree off at the stump and he can grab the tree with a skitter and grab several, several of them, move them around and drop them off in piles. And he'll go around the whole block and do that. Now some of the trees are actually too big around for the feller buncher to grab a hold of. And in that case, they have a guy with a chainsaw that will come in and hand fell them and drop them by hand. And once they get those trees stacked up in the piles, there's three to four skitters that come around and grab a hold of the piles and they pull them onto the landing. Well, first they pull them up to the, the cutting saw and the guy operating the cutting saw has a big arm. He grabs a hold of the log and from inside the cab, he determines which part of the tree is going to go for logs and which part of the tree will go through the chipper to make wood chips. So once he makes that decision, he'll cut off the log, he'll move the saw log to a pile that he's already determined or the log truck will come and pick them up. He then grabs the top of the tree and will run it through the chipper. And that's what you're seeing coming out of the chipper there is wood chips and drops into this big pile here. And as they do that, they also accumulate some material that is bark, um, fine limbs, twigs that they don't want to run through the chipper. They'll pile that up on the other side of the chips. 
and then these uh, big trucks come in. You can see behind me they're loading a truck right now with a front end loader and they'll load it up to the top with chips. Once they get all the chips off site, they're left with that pile of bark and debris and things they don't want to make into chips. They'll bring another piece of equipment on site. They run that material through it and they turn it into bark mulch that's used for landscaping. And once they're done hauling all this material off site, the whole area that's disturbed from the landing will get seeded with a wildlife food mix that has clovers in it. So we're cutting around 20% of the game lands for woodcock habitat. And once we're done with this, the idea is to get the material off site so our food and cover workers can maintain this in early succession over time for woodcock.